Okay, put on your thinking cap. I'm gonna put you to the test. Okapi. What is it? Food? Nope. Dance? Guess again. Flower? Eh. For the answer, we turn to children's author Keith Bosco of Greenwood. Keith, thank you so much for coming in. Hey, thanks for having me. Okay, so what's an okapi? Well, an okapi, it's an actual animal. Um, a lot of people think that I made it up, but I did not make it up. It's, uh, it lives in the um, Democratic Republic of the Congo. Okay. It's the only place it can be found. It's the only living relative to a giraffe. Uh -huh. So they're cousins. So, so this is an okapi? This is an okapi. This isn't what a real one looks like. Right. Um, this is the character of my book. Uh, the sloppy okapi. Yeah, I was going to say, the, you, yeah. you've written a book about the sloppy okapi. Tell me, yes. tell me about this. So Charlie, the young okapi, he wants to be a detective, as you can tell by his get up there. Right. Um, but he's so sloppy, he can't find his own thing. So the whole premise is, how can he be a good detective if he can't even find his own, <laughs> you know, he loses his detective gear. He loses his badge, hat, magnifying glass. And, and everyone's like, what kind of detective could you even be if you can't find these these items? Right. Okay. And so it's, it, you know, he he's, has to, uh, you know, overcome that weakness to follow his dream. So why an Okapi? What got your interest into an Okapi? Um, well, my son, about five years ago is when I actually wrote the story. And my son was about three at the time. He was watching this show called uh, Go Diego Go on right. Nickelodeon. Yeah. And there was this Okapi on there. And I'm walking up the stairs and I see this animal. And I'm like, that's a crazy looking animal. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, that'd be kind of fun to do something with, because I'd always had a um, desire to write a children's book, and I had actually written some st some stories um, that I'd never turned into anything before that. But I, I was walking up the stairs, and I said, you know what? I want to do something with that. And sloppy rhymed with Okapi, so I said, okay, let's do that. And the thought of detective, so I went up in about 20, 30 minutes, just sketched down a story real quick. Yeah. Yeah. And the magic happened. And the magic happened. How about this? So is this your first... This is my first, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. This is, my, did yeah. you enjoy it? Yes, I did. Yeah, it was very fun. It was a lot of work. I, I thought from the day I went upstairs and just wrote the story that it would be, you know, hey, it's a book, let's put it out. Right. Um, that didn't happen that way. Uh, my editor came on board and said, this is a great idea, let's redo it now. <laughs> so I had to, <laughs> you know, I had to basically go back through the story and kept the core of it, but really make it a little more interesting, and um, then found the illustrator, Taylor Patterson. So do I understand that everybody involved in the book is from Delaware? Yes, yeah, Taylor's from Greenwood um, as well. I'm from, um, live in Greenwood. Um, I grew up in Kent County in Magnolia. Right. Moved to Greenwood in 08 with my wife, and um, Taylor grew up in Greenwood. And there's a couple guys that were involved behind the scenes that really helped make this thing happen. They were both from Milford. They live out in LA right now, friends of mine named Dave Lovett, and um, Brett Carpenter. Yeah. So, yeah. so what is it that you're hoping that your readers take from the sloppy okapi? Well, you know, um, one thing I didn't think about was actually educating people that there's an actual animal called an okapi. Because right. a lot of people think that I made it up. But uh, you know, I can't. I'm not that smart. I'm not that good. But um, so I'm in a roundabout way teaching people about this animal, which I found out is an actual, uh, it's an endangered species, which I didn't know oh. until I started writing the book. So, And you're um, trying to take this into a cartoon series too? I am, yeah. And the premise is to really teach kids to um, overcome their weakness, you know, not to just identify and accept your weakness, but to, um, you know, follow your dream. And sometimes that takes hard work. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to overcome things. So, And um, what we're doing with that is really trying to build momentum behind the book so we can um, catch the attention of some networks to turn it into a uh, animated cartoon. There you go. Now you're going on a tour. Yes. Tell me about this tour. So we've, my wife and I and our kids wanted to, have wanted to travel for a long time. Right. Um, and we were planning on getting an RV and going out on the road. But um, I don't know, uh, a while ago we thought, you know, our book's coming out. Why don't we incorporate the book into this traveling? So we got an RV. And we're hitting the road, and we're going to just book some book readings and signing events right. uh, across the country. We're starting up, going up to New England, and then heading down south towards Florida, and then heading west. All right, so what about after the tour? What are you going to do then? Well, uh, that, that's unknown. Ah. <laughs> I'm not really sure yet. Um, you know, if, uh, if things really pick up with that and we get the attention of a network, then hopefully we'll, we'll uh, go to, um, you know, make, make a show out of it. We've had right. some promising... Um, leads through through my friends that are out on the West Coast um, have met some very interesting people in the business that have said 
build momentum behind the book. And yeah. once you do that, we'd love to help you really pitch this into a show. So um, that's the idea behind it of just, you know, why not Let's go all in and make it happen. So um, made some changes in life to be able to allow us to hit the road. I was going to ask you yeah. about that. You sold the house. Well, so we tried selling the house. It's, okay. it's, it's on the market. Yeah. Um, it hasn't sold. So we were, we're still trying to figure out what we want to do. We, we had to sell it anyway because right. we have four kids now. Our house is too small. So, so let's just put them all in a small RV. And exactly. That's Every, a great idea, yeah. Keith. Everyone's like, Why? okay, so you're outgrowing your house, so you're getting an RV. I'm like, yeah, it makes no sense. But, <laughs> um, you know, we figured it'd be fun. We kind of downsize for a minute. So right. then, you know, then we'll travel and, you know, we'll settle down in a, in a house that we can actually fit in. So... Keith Bosco, the sloppy old copy Keith Goodluck. Hey, thanks for having this, me. Please yeah, be back in you. touch with us. We yeah. want to know more about how this works out. This is going to be absolutely fantastic. <laughs>